in the Mexican Republic. Uh, the video camera had become the most important instrument to really capture this uh, new reality. Even the Mexican Army, the Air Force in Mexico, recorded UFOs that uh, the video was given to me and I released that to the world. In that case, that happened on March the 5th, 2004, uh, the soldiers were able to record something that they couldn't see with their own eyes. And that's amazing. That was the first time someone recorded something that it wasn't, they weren't able to see. With Jaime Maussan aboard a plane, coming from San Antonio to Mexico City, flying over a place called uh, San Luis Potosí to, to film a UFO, following the plane. It was detected by the radars and I have everything on film. So for us it's normal. Maybe because we're searching for it. Maybe because we are trying to look for this reality. Maybe they are following us. I don't know, but it happened to me that at least 50 times, maybe more. There are objects that we cannot see with our own eyes but they are there, they are watching us. In the last months in Mexico, after thousands of videos, we have been registering some of the most spectacular videos. You can see hundreds and hundreds of objects making formations and flying together, exactly uh, the same thing that you can see in the military video. These formations moving at the same speed, in the same direction, uh, uh, at the same altitude. As the more one researches, the more one discovers that literally tens of thousands of very credible people of every age, occupation and nationality are claiming that they have had personal contact with either aliens or interdimensional beings. Credible researchers now say that as many as 60 different species of intelligent, superconscious beings have been interacting with humanity for millions of years. Physically, they, they look, they're humanoid. Their skin is as white as a piece of paper. Throughout much of their adult life, they're the same height that I am, 5'11", 6 feet tall. Their eyes are perhaps twice as large as ours. They're typically blue eyes with white pupils. Although when they, when they get older, especially the men, their eyes take on a pink shade. Their eyes stretch further around the sides of their head than human eyes do. And their, their ears and their nose are only about half the size of human ears and noses. And their ears lay back along the side of their head more than a human does. They have, their lips are not as prominent as humans, and they don't have teeth, they just have ridges, because they're plant eaters, they don't eat meat. How can we know for sure exactly how many extraterrestrial races are visiting us or interacting with humanity? I mean, there are different sources um, disclosing some of that information. I found none the most credible to be whistleblowers, people who have worked in these um, various secret projects who in some way have kind of been given information that gives them an idea of exactly how many races are, are here. One of those sources is a, a, a sergeant who worked in the for 22 years in the Air Force, uh, uh, Clifford Stone, um, and he was involved in these uh, top secret projects that involve the retrieval of crashed disks. And in that process, he was able to get quite a bit of information on how many extraterrestrial races are visiting us. And he, he came up with the figure of 57. Uh, others have come up with uh, slightly more. Um, another prominent uh, whistleblower uh, or uh, a former employee of the, of the CIA is John Lear, and he talks about uh, over 60 races that are visiting the Earth. On one night I saw between 200 and 300 different tall white individuals, there were so many I couldn't count them, uh, lined up along the mountains to the east of, uh, up along where the ammunition bunker was. Uh, on the night that the tall white lady known as Pamela was supposed to finish her um, <laughs> final exam to be head of the 
technology transfer team to go into Livermore. In amongst those two or three hundred tall whites, and that's just an estimate because I, I, I couldn't, there was, it was a crowd of people and I couldn't count them all. There were also American Air Force personnel, uh, um, nobody below the rank of colonel. There, were, there was like a four-star general, a three-star general. There were several of them. There were also several American government people in civilian clothing over there. Could it be possible that our universe is not only immense, but that it is full of life, and that there is a great diversity of this life spread throughout our own local galaxy and even our solar system? Equally outstanding is the recent revelation by the government of Brazil of their intent to turn over the official UFO files dating back to as early as 1954 to the people of Brazil. Well, the Virginia case is probably the best well-documented case that we have in Brazil and probably in the world. Yeah, you know that over 80 witnesses came forward, first-hand witnesses came forward during the first weeks and they are still coming after it happened. During all these years, we still keep getting witnesses that come forward and tell us pieces of the big story that we know that in comprises the capture of at least two alien creatures in the city of Virginia. We know for a fact, because we have it all documented, plus the witnesses have confirmed and cross-confirmed that one alien was captured in the morning of that day, which was a Saturday, about 10.30, by a fire department and uh, some personnel from the army. Another creature was seen at the same day by the middle afternoon by three girls. It was them who called attention of all the city to the fact that strange creatures have been seen because when the first one was seen and captured in the morning, it didn't draw too much attention. But at the afternoon, when the girls saw another creature and then spread the word to everybody, we saw the devil, that's what they thought they saw. That night of the Saturday, January 20, 1996, that second preacher, probably the same one saw by the girls, was also captured by a police troop, a police car, actually a military police car, with two policemen inside. The one who was sitting in a passenger seat was Marco Elixerezzi, and he was lucky enough to be the one who spotted the creature and grabbed it with his own bare arms, bare hands, got back to the car, put the creature in his lap, and took it to the hospital. 25 days after that, he died on February 15 of some bacteria attacks, proving that his immune, immune deficiency, deficiency system was absolutely destroyed. And uh, army personnel and authorities kept it all secret for lots of time until the UFO researchers started protesting along with the press, and we did so much pressure that eventually information was released about it. The exobiological biological aspect that the probability of life out there has actually increased over what it was in 1950. And the uh, indication that there may be ways of traveling faster than the speed of light so that, hey, they can get here from there. It doesn't mean that they're coming in five minutes or they're coming every hour or every day, but you know, they might be able to traverse dis huge distances in a period of weeks or months or something instead of spending hundreds or thousands of years. Well, look at the UFO sightings. Maybe they provide the answer that they are here.